Hey guys, Zekt here, and welcome to my console Musa Guide for Awakening. I will separate the video in different parts and will show you the time for each part here. So let's get into it. So let's start with the skill build. First off, after you finish your awakening quest, you get a free skill reset and uh, use that to reset all your skills so you can learn the awakening skill set. So we go through all skills now and I will show you the bare minimum you need to make Musa work for PvE and PvP. So first off, Blind Thrust, Absolute, Chase, Ultimate Chase, Musa Spirit to Absolute, Dragon Bite, you can leave that on two if you don't have enough points, Blooming, Rising Storm to Absolute, get the Ultimate to, uh, version also, Stop Arrow to Absolute, don't need the double shot yet, the passives, all skilled to the maximum. In terms of Rabam skills, uh, use the ultimate Musa Spirit and the Quick Shot. The Steel Girl and the other one aren't really worth it. Really, they are not really good, don't use them. So, quick shot, high damage range skill with CC, ultimate Musa Spirit, your heal, and also provides you a 30 crit for 10 seconds. So, that's the bare minimum for non awakening. Uh, you can use the Blooming Phantom. However, that's uh, using Blooming Phantom can be can be dangerous because the animation is very long from the absolute version of uh, of Blooming. So the the stay Blooming on one is way better for PvP in my opinion because I only want it because of the CC and it's the animation is much faster and you cancel you can much faster uh, cancel out of it. So yeah, Gale is another skill that is very strong, but on console it's kind of bugged sometimes. It didn't work all the time, so I would say out of three times it don't work one time, so it's not worth skilling it. For Awakening, Fiery Angel, Spinner, you can leave that one, Fiery Curise, Dash Slash, Twister, Musa's Resolve, Crosscut, pro Projection, Backflow, Cross Crusher, Foul Play, and Below the Bell. So that is the bare minimum, in my opinion, you need to make Musa work. The other skills, you Tiger Blade is also very nice for movement. It's not the best damage skill though, because you can't use any awakening skills or any other really good skills in it, but for movement it's really nice. You can chase 30 seconds without using stamina, so if you have a fairy with uh, pots, you can dash un chase unlimited for 30 seconds. That's really nice though. The double shot and triple shot, uh, you can use those. However, the the uh, normal stop arrow is way faster than the triple shot and the double shot. So, if you skill those, your arrows will come a bit slower. But you can use those if you want. Yeah, get this person also. Charge arrow and uh, this arrow, you, you don't need those. Really, grapple arrow also, yeah. Yeah, it's not really worth it skilling Blaze, Rising Storm Blaze, you can skill that also. It's not really necessary to skill, but if you want, as a finisher. Blind Slash, really good skill too, to uh, float. Sometimes you can use it in combo too, but that is the bare minimum of 
skills you need in the first place. So next up we have skill add-ons. These are mine skillers at the moment. Um, skill add-ons are generally personal preference I would say. They have a few musts like Dragon Bite, 20% crit for 9 seconds, attack speed 7% for 5 seconds. Crosscut, 20 monster damage for 8 seconds, 10% attack speed, 5 seconds, and Rising Storm, 10% attack speed, 5 seconds. The rest is to up to you, I would say, to personal preference. I have projection with PvP damage and uh, uh, accuracy because I Lot, I use projection for many combos and uh, getting these extra AP and the accuracy is really nice. Uh, below the belt, PvP damage, because it's my trading seal, I often use it to just trade people and I get the 10 AP PvP damage for 5 seconds and uh, movement debuff. Uh, Crosscut, obviously my PvE skill, um, I saw many users using m more PvE skill than one. Those PvE bonus doesn't stack, so if you have one PvE bonus, it's enough. You don't need three skills with monster damage. <laughs> so Rising Storm with defense, because yeah, it was the best other thing besides an attack speed. Uh, and I have blooming with PvP damage and attack speed if I la land the CC. But to be honest, the most important ones are Dragon Bite with 20% crit, the monster damage uh, somewhere. I have the crosscut, the 10% attack speed on crosscut, and the 10% attack speed on Rising Storm for console. Though. I would say this, these are the must haves. So yeah, that's was all about skill levels. So next up we have uh, my crystal setup or crystals in general from Musa. In the main weapon we have the two time precision and it's a must I would say for the uh, accuracy and the 10% ignore all resistance for ball stones so you have 20% ignore all resistance it's really important. In my Nuva I have uh, one critical hit uh, crystal for damage, for crit damage, and this is only crit damage, not crit rate. So you gain 10% crit damage from this crystal, from this blue one. Um, the other is in Hanhoom. You want to have the four, uh, four Hanhooms for the, pers uh, for the accuracy and the health and the uh, damage reduction. Uh, in Heath I have the uh, Hanhooms times two because I don't run evasion yet. If you run evasion, you need to change that to evasion crystals. But in my uh, case, I am damage reduction right now, so yeah, I use that in my heave. Uh, in Dim Tree, I have Bond Cavalinos for 300 HP and uh, 60R. Uh, big Gen Reaper, of course, best in slot, a must item. Uh, Oregons, I have uh, one Hysteria and the other uh, Unhoom. The one is for Styria is for movement speed and stamina, and to get the five stamina bonus, uh, the five movement speed bonus. Sorry, I have the uh, swiftness crystal in my outfit set. So yeah, that's basically my crystal setup. You can change that a bit, but I think that's a really nice crystal setup. Though. Uh, in terms of gear, uh, many people ask me if I run a raisin or DR. As soon, as long as you have TED gear, I would say go for DR. Uh, TED evasion is not really worth it, and you sacrifice a lot of accuracy with the Libuas. And Musa is a, yeah, lacks of accuracy, so yeah, go with DR as long as you're TED and you're quite good to go. You can also go for a Narc earring. I have a TED Narc earring here. If you feel like you're not t tanky enough. Maybe you can hold out a little longer under the enemy fire then. So yeah, that's all about crystals. 
So next up we have the combo part and I will show you my hotbar. Uh, on the hotbar I have uh, dash slash because uh, dash slash you really need it on your hotbar because you only can do it after spinner and spinner is crap. Uh, the other skill is projection because uh, projection can be used in non-awakening to get into awakening. So you can combo uh, out of non-awakening with uh, projection directly. Um, I have Moose's Resolve. This is just personal preference. Uh, you don't have to do this skill uh, on your hotbar, but, yeah, but you can. Um, the other skill is uh, my Rebam, the ultimate Moose spirit. Uh, you it's a must, you have to uh, do it on the hotbar. Another skill, Cyclone Slash, is my tornado skill. It's a really nice. Uh, uh, catch a lot of people with that. And another skill that's another must is the uh, rubber bomb shot, the quick shot. You really need to need those. So the death slash, the projection, the ultimate mutter spirit, and the uh, rubber bomb shot are definitely must haves. The cyclone slash and the loose resolve is a can. Next up we have uh, combos. I will show you a few uh, safe combos. There are a few combos you can't do on uh, on console than uh, on P uh, like on PC. But uh, we have quite we can do uh, quite enough combos to yeah, deal with everything. So first combo is uh, Dragon Bite, Blind Thrust, Rising Storm, Projection, Dash Slash, Below the Belt, Fire Recurve Ice. This is a really safe combo and really strong um, and you can do this combo also if you stop error of, uh, your enemy. So if you land an error and the is stiff you can go with D-Bite, Dragon Claw is optional, Rising Storm, Projection, Dash Slash, Below the Belt, Fire Recure Ice. Uh, this is a nice combo if you hit a CC in Non Awakening. If you hit uh, your opponent in Awakening with, uh, let's say, you hit with uh, Counter Assassination, so you go like that, and you have to see them, you can go from there, you can directly go with Projection, Dead Slash, Below the Belt, and Fire Crevice. Or oh, another, uh, another uh, opener, you can uh, CC with Moses Resolve, go with the Cross cut, uh, projection, cross crush of foul play, really strong combo, also works. Uh, another advanced combo, uh, this is the really strong one, but to be honest, uh, that doesn't work all the time, but when you really want to try something new, this is maybe something for you. You uh, have to open with Fiery Angel. Go to Thrust Crot, Backflow, uh, C Swap, Blind Thrust, Gale. Yeah, Gale didn't work here, so yeah, it's a really difficult combo, but really strong. Gale, C Swap, Dash Slash, Below the Belt, Fire Crevice. Really strong combo, but this is one of the combos that works for PC really good, but not as good as for console, so yeah, just to have shown you one of those combos that won't really work for us. But maybe you can give it a try if you want. So yeah, that were a few combos. There are a lot more though, but I think they are quite good to go. Especially the Dragon Bite, Blind Thrust, uh, Rising Storm, Projection, Death Slash, Below the Belt, and Fire Cree Rise one. It's Rather better, much bread and butter combo for me. I will use it many times in 1v1 uh, situations, of course, in 1vx uh, or large scale, it's not really nice, but for 1v1, it's a really nice combo though. Next, I will show you uh, the engages and uh, the safe and unsafe engages Musa has. 
um, a non-awakening. We had the most popular one, I think. It's the Dragon Bite. It's a frontal guard with a low uh, three seconds cooldown and stun on good hits. It's the uh, one of the main engage skills. You, when you have the choice of a non-awakening, always go with D Bite instead of anything unprotected because of the protection. Uh, another engage in non-awakening is the blooming. Uh, when you back chase behind your ta opponent, you can directly bloom. It's unprotected though, so be careful if you have the phantom blooming, it can be very dangerous for you. So yeah, keep that in mind. The other engage in non-awakening is the step arrow. Uh, when you hit once you hit that, you can follow up with a debite or anything else. But uh, yeah, the stop arrow and the quick shot uh, both are stiff. The uh, quick shot is also a really nice damage skill, but when you have a land the successful arrow, make sure to follow up quickly with a debuy or something else because it's only a stiff, it lasts for one second. And yeah. The other end gauge in brackets, I would say, is the cyclone slash. Uh, Often, it's uh, often people don't see the skill because console performance is shit, and they don't see the skill because it won't render. <laughs> so yeah, you can sometimes you I catch people because of that. It's yeah, yeah you can give it a try if you want. <laughs> so in Awakening, your save your safe engage is uh, your really safe engage is only one counter assassination. It's on a six second cooldown and has frontal guard on it, stun on good hits and uh, can be cancelled after a few skills for example when you go with the cross cut you instantly can go with the counter assassination really a uh, common engage I would say with the super armor cross cut and then go with the counter assassination another engage is a fiery angel but be careful with Fiery Angel because it's unprotected and your enemy is, it sees you coming. So when you when you stand here and you go with Fiery Angel and yeah, you're open. So be careful, your opponents can use that just to see you. Um, when you are new Musa and new to PvP, I would recommend don't use Fiery Angel at all for engage because it's really unsafe. Don't uh, just use it for movement or to get away or something like that. Uh, only use Fiery Angel when you're really sure that you don't get uh, caught or punished for that in this particular moment. Uh, another engage in Awakening is the Cross Crusher. Cross Crusher is uh, also one of the uh, hard hitters, so it has frontal guard before the attack. So as soon as, you, as the Mushindo is in the ground, uh, the hit applies, the frontal guard will end and you're open. So as soon as you see the fire on the ground, you're open to CC. So keep that in mind. The foul play, uh, however, is frontal guard again, so there's a gap between the cross crusher and the fall play. It's always good to keep that in mind that there's a, yeah, a gap between those two skills and uh, be careful with that though in your back then because yeah, you're stationary with cross crusher so be careful with that. Another good engage is Musa's Resolve. It's an AoE, um, an, an unprotected AoE stun it stuns up to 10 targets and it's a really really nice skill to get uh, in large scale and if even for 1v1s. So uh, the range is quite nice, I think uh, I have to wait for the cooldown. But uh, yeah, you always can uh, use that between some between two skills uh, when you know when your enemy is unprotected there. Okay, yeah, that's the range I think it's about the so the range is quite huge. Use the you can follow up with any other skill once you hit uh, Moses Resolve. So yeah, I think that is all about uh, the engages you need to know the important ones. Uh, there are a few other ways how you can see your enemy, but I think when you 
use the safe ones and uh, the other ones when you when you know you can uh, engage unprotected you should be fine so let's start with the movement part for the movement part i will show you uh, a duel with the Sark from yesterday, it was quite nice duels and quite nice catches but I think that's the best way to show you how the movement with Musa actually works and uh, I will slow down the fight a little bit so you can see what I'm doing and uh, when I'm doing that uh, the movement is not just spamming RT because you have to watch that the stamina is okay and so it's a good combination of your using your chase, your frontal guard and your super armor. Always keep that in mind. You can, for stamina, to regain your stamina, you can use Fiery Angel, Cross Guard, Below the Belt and Back Flow. You, oh, that are damage skills, yes, but you can use them to get your stamina back when you're low stamina, just Go with cross guard, linger it, and your stamina comes back. Same with fiery angel and with the other skills. Another important thing about Musa to know is, even if you know the combos and even if you know how the skills works from your class, playing Musa in PvP is all about knowing your opponent. So. I only was able to catch the Sog because I, I know that when the Sog is casting the Grim Reaper skill where, the ch where, where she's charging uh, her weapon, I know on the attack she was unprotected. So I know when to engage and that's all about it. You have to learn the gaps from your enemy. When you don't know that it, you will have a hard time as a Musa, especially against grab classes. So, let's move to the PvE part. We begin with uh, Akman. So, for Akman, I recommend this room here. It's uh, under the top room, especially if you are a newer Musa. Because this room is uh, quite good for Musa and it's not that contested. There are better rooms, but this one is good, not that contested and it's quite chill to grind. So you start over here, um, I get them together. Uh, before uh, I, I got to the combos, um, my buff rotation is uh, Zarendia meal, Knight's Combat Thration and Karma Zylvia meal, but I think that information is not important, but because I think we will get the Kron meal soon, so yeah. The, I will use the PvP crown wheel when they come out, so yeah, just to keep that in mind. So when you have your group over here, you go with Dragon Bite, Land Thrust, Rising Storm, Sea Swap, Cross Cut, Back Fall, Fire Request, Dash Slash, Below the Belt, and then just uh, crevice them to death. Uh, with Fiery Crevice, when you hold LB or L1 for PS4, you can uh, spam it like that. If your uh, if everything else is on cooldown, this is your uh, strongest damage option. So if they have a uh, little health, you can just spam this and until they're there. And I can do another group here. Go with the rebum uh, to pull them together. Yeah, then I go like that. that should kill everyone. Uh, I highly re recommend using uh, Demi Human Alexa for uh, because it's very cheap and you gain uh, 10, 10 hum uh, Demi Human uh, damage. It's very nice for Akman. So I'm at 270 Kudum now. I um, will drop my AP now so you can see how I'm grind. Uh, I think that's the AP you normally start to grind Akman. Uh, even on that AP, I'm pretty sure I can kill them quite fast. Yeah, takes some longer, but with cross crush, 
They die pretty fast though. I'm not sure how much trash loot you can make with the AP. It's quite a long time for me. But in this room with my AP, I'm uh, doing around uh, 9,900 to 8,100. Uh, I already overclear this room with my AP, so I think that's uh, the maximum you can get here. But there's uh, another room uh, where you can do a bit more. Where I did already more, but to be honest, this room is really contested. And I always like grinding on Asha, and this room is here quite chill on Asha. I will show you the room in a sec. So yeah. Um, I think that was about uh, the Ackman part, so let's move to Hestria then. So let's start with Hestria. In Hestria things are a bit di uh, different. You need more AP to grind here efficiently. I recommend 249 uh, AP to grind here. Uh, with uh, Alexas and stuff, you can uh, do grind here a bit earlier, but to be efficient, I recommend this AP. Um, or 261 uh, Kudum. So, for the combo uh, that I'm using, you pull uh, all mobs together. This is the Kalkreesh uh, rotation, by the way. Go with Dragonbind, Blind Thrust, Rising Storm, Sea Swap, Crosscut, Backflow, Cryo uh, Revise, Dead Slash, get behind them, Cross Crusher, Foul Play, and they should be there. Uh, that is. Uh, you can do uh, a bit, that a bit faster though, but. This is the combo that I'm using for the most of the time. I'll show you uh, once more again. Get behind them and just yeah, revise them to that. Uh, I'm able to get uh, 3k to 3 3.1k. Uh, with 270 Kudum. Uh, there are classes uh, that can get way more. Uh, uh, 3.4, 3 3.5 at the moment, I think it's the maximum I heard. Um, I think I'm, I can do a bit more than 3.1, but to be honest, I'm a chill grinder and I'm yeah, not that sweaty. <laughs> so I think it's, a, it's possible to make a bit more though. Um, I will drop my AP a bit, so you can see that I'm a bit less AP. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, wait a second. Uh, not that. Yeah, no, I can't go. On the 40, uh, 45 bracket, sorry. So even with the AP, you can extend the combo a bit. If they don't die, after cross crusher, and uh, yeah, even then you can go and pre awakening, get the crit buffs back. Gold rising storm and blaze. Blaze is uh, also really strong here. You can use that as well if they don't die. So uh, yeah. I will do it another time here with the. I'm at uh, 250 Kudum now. I think that Wrecker. Uh, yeah, normally what you, you would use the new one at this point. So yeah, I think you, you guys got uh, the, how the rotation works, uh, the skill rotation, and uh, yeah, that's about it, I think.
so just a few things I forgot earlier. Uh, skill wise, um, uh, I forgot to say your chase. Your uh, is an uh, three second iframe, so keep that in mind. On um, every three three seconds, uh, this chase. That is not a cooldown as an iframe, so you can't be grabbed, CC'd, or get uh, get damaged. So uh, use it. Um, while it's a cooldown of its super armor, the other skill I forgot was the Nemesis Slash. It's on heal. Uh, you can use it in non awakening and in awakening. When you don't have a fairy, it's a very nice skill to heal uh, back up. It's not an OP heal, but it's an okay heal. <laughs> And um, the other skill was Backstep Slash. Backstep Slash is a really nice debuff. Minus 50% for 10 seconds movement speed, that's a huge debuff. However, this is unprotected. And um, I, s I know the Samusa that, uh, Samusa that used this skill, to be honest. I don't use this very often. There are a few situations where I use that. But um, it's more like an advanced technique because when you're just spamming it and hope for the for the good uh, CC, uh, you mostly get punished for that. So keep that in mind. Another thing about blind thrust. Uh, blind thrust, you can um, do the forward blind thrust and do it in your movement. For example, chase forward blind thrust chase, so you get the crit the 30% crit buff, it's really important. Um, for me, to be, uh, for example, in my, I have one crit, um, because of the Zerandria meal. I have no crit in my crystals, and you don't need crit in your crystals. When you got your debuy and your blind thrust, you have 50% crit on every skill. Uh, that's more than enough. The cap of crit is 60%, you can't go higher than 60% crit and uh, some of your damage skills have 100% crit also so yeah since the cross crush above got to 50% it's pretty strong right now so you don't need crit in your inventory crystals to be strong another skill that I forgot was uh, uh, this one here it's the block skill when someone, something or someone hits your block, you go like uh, that. It's an, it's in forward guard CC. Many people forgot about that. That's in frontal guard CC. Uh, you have to be careful, however, because uh, you're quite stationary, but you can't cancel out of it directly. So, yeah. Um, when other people charge on you, uh, unprotected, you can punish uh, them with just, with just uh, holding block and yeah. As soon as they hit you, they just got to see, so keep that in mind too. Uh, for the kicks, um, there's one, the kicks are trash to be honest, there's one kick that is a bit this has uh, that you can use that's uh, this one the uh, roundhouse kick because it's a knockdown and it's air smash uh, air smash is for styler combos or to be honest <laughs> um, when you like yes, you get a cc on your enemy like with rising storm or i think with blind slash looks better air smash looks like that okay back to here wait a second okay that Okay, I, yeah, it won't show it at the moment. Maybe it's. But I will try another time. Yeah, okay, I think you can see it there. The, with, the, with this kick, um, you got a knockdown on your uh, opponent, and knockdown is uh, the, the CC that uh, holds the longest, so they are on the ground quite long. But. It's just for styler combos, so it's not necessary to skill this skill to use this. 
So another th uh, skill uh, before I said Gale is not worth scaling. Um, that's only true because of the long animation. You can skill it, of course, if you have the points. If you go with the uh, forward blind thrust and go with the Gale, it only uh, will make the third hit. So if you get lucky and uh, or you see your opponent with uh, Dragon Bite and go with uh, the forward blind thrust. You can use scale the, uh, the damage is quite okay and it's a flow so yeah you can use that also there's no really need to to be honest every other combo will work better or or even so it's no need to do it it's just yeah, it looks nice and something different so a few things uh, for the end uh, all the things you hear today was the, just my experience with Musa and how I play the Musa and that don't mean that you have to do it that way there are other ways to play Musa but I hope I could give you uh, a good look uh, on Musa and help you a bit and uh, thanks for watching guys